Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your day. God bless you. Well, we're talking about the women's suffrage movement. Yes. I thought that you were a perfect person to talk to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Perfect person to talk to. <laughs> So the women's suffrage movement, for those who don't know, we would say probably the first Bahamian feminist, real feminist movement in the country. Women that fought for the social, economic, and political right. um, equality of the sexes. Yes. Do you do you agree? You agree with that statement? Or how sure do you feel? I'm not sure I would label it as a feminist movement right. because I I don't believe that the women who fought necessarily fought on the basis that they were fighting um, sort of exclusively for women, right. even though that was the major facet of what they were doing. Because remember now, mm -hmm. this had to do with, the, this was the, the whole fight was geared towards democracy and the deepening of democracy. That was the first facet of it. Okay. And then we had the fact that we had women in, in, uh, during the 19, late 19, the, the early to 19, late 1950s, they mm -hmm. weren't able to vote. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now my grandmother, Mary um, Naomi Mason Ingram, okay. Okay. Yeah. she was the well, wife you, yes. Tell me a little of bit about that. a politician. Yeah. Right. Wow. And uh, my, my grandfather was Rufus Harcourt Ingram. Mm -hmm. And uh, he... Were you born into this? I, I was born into it. Absolutely. And uh, he, of course, was the representative. Um, he had served some time as the representative for the one or two of the Southern Islands, Crooked Island and Agua, that kind of thing. Right. And what happened was in the late 1950s, there was an election held, and he wasn't successful. Mm. And in lamenting his loss, mm -hmm. uh, he was disgusted mm -hmm. with my grandmother. And, and they came up with a plan. Her, you know, they they gave you know, up with a plan. They vote, you know, something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll make it. Uh, so that's and that was really the genesis she, of it. Mrs. 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 You know, she was, she was, she was, she was, she was not, I wouldn't say that it turned out to be the, the, the main reason, mm -hmm. but I think it was the genesis of the thought. The yes. brain power behind it yeah, definitely it was, yeah. was the missing from, the yeah. Thought, you see, she was a campaign for great for things to happen, something has to spark your imagination. Right. And so I think that that sparked her imagination. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think then it sort of brought her into the reality that, hey, you know something? We have all these wonderful women here. They're learning. Um, you know, she and her friends were, she was a businesswoman. And mm -hmm. there were many other Bahamian businesswomen. There was um, right around the corner from where she lived, there was Althea Mortimer, who had yeah. a typing school. Yes. Mm -hmm. She taught uh, commerce. Mm -hmm. And so you had all these women who had such a rich educational past and then they didn't have this privilege mm -hmm. and so it was the spark that generated uh, the thought and then was the basis from where they started and so she was able to come together it was her um, the, the the persons who um, uh, reputed to be the persons who actually got the movement started mm -hmm. would have been my grandmother mm -hmm. along with uh, Eugenia Lockhart yeah. mm -hmm. you may have heard of her Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mabel Walker Mabel Wa yes. mm -hmm. and Georgiana Simonet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And Georgiana is really the grandmother of our Attorney General, Alison Maynard Gibson. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, didn't know that. And so yeah. And so these were the, the women who came together. Right. From all the different walks of life. Think about it now, how dynamic that must have been. Right. In a dale in a male dominated right. society. So you, you you ladies really can't help yourselves. You know I'm you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 well, you know, I, I, I read that the women back then actually to tell their husbands how to vote anyway. I'm sure they had a great part there, right? you know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure they did. But, you know, this here it was, you got these women, you got them mobilized. And you know what was so wonderful about it? Politics did not play a part in what they were doing. They sat down, they brought their minds together, and mm -hmm. they made a determination that, yeah. you know, we are going to fight this cause. Mm -hmm. How old were you? Um, you well, the thing, when the, when the movement actually got started, I wasn't born yet. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, but luckily, the year of the vote was my birth year. Wow. The really? actual year when they accomplished wow. the right for women to vote was 1960. Wow. And that was my year of birth. Could, could this explain the name behind your, the meaning behind your name? No. Why you got that oh, name? no, no, no. no. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> another <laughs> I know. I didn't even think about that, Howard. Yeah, yeah, I did, did not think about and that. You know, I mean, um, I'm in the right to vote. That would have given a lot of hope. Hope, hope. Yes, yes, right. yes, yes. And um, but you know, I I often marvel at them though because mm -hmm. the uh, the women of that era. Yeah. Because they, they it, it was such a they were fighting against so much. You know, mm -hmm. you know the male domination, the fact that they were seen as homemakers. Mm -hmm. 
they were seen as the women who you had to stay home and look after the children and all those kinds of things. And that was basically what was accepted. That was the norm in society. Right. But here you have these women who were willing to think outside the box mm. and to actually get something done that was separate and apart from what was the normal accepted behavior. So they, of course, so they got their petition going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here we have now, the first petition they would have uh, accomplished would have been some, they would have gotten like some 550 signatures. Wow. Right. The very first petition. For a very they first got petition. They got together, right. Right. And um, they were able to present that um, petition. And um, they, they presented it to the then governor, who was um, Lennox Boyd. That's correct, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, he was the British governor. Right. And he was, he encouraged them. Right. Um, and he indicated uh, to, to them that he would, of course, raise that issue in the parliament in, Brit in Britain, which I think he did. Right. Yeah, he did. And mm -hmm. he also encouraged them to go ahead and to um, take out another petition or to get more signatures. Okay. And they were able to accomplish, I think it was some 9,500 signatures when they mm -hmm. finally had that petition that to Gerald Cash um, was actually... Um, had petitioned to present to the oh, House of Parliament. Oh, he raised it in the House. Okay. He yes, raised he raised it. it. But of course he was defeated mm. in terms of having, mm -hmm. you know, having anything done yeah. mm -hmm. at that point. But you see that behind even that women's movement, you had men. Mm -hmm. And so this is why I, 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 I hesitate to right. call it a feminist mm -hmm. movement. Right. Because you had some men who were in the trenches with them mm -hmm. and fighting along with them yeah. to achieve this great thing. Absolutely. Minister, I, you know, in my preparation for today's show, I, I did some research and I was able to come across something that your grandmother would have written in 1962. Right. Um, this actually was a letter to the editor. And if I could just read it to you and just, just get your thoughts, and I'm sure you, your family spoke about this letter. I find it to be very much articulate. Yeah. It is a clear expression of the indomitable spirit of the Bahamian woman. Right. right. Um, your, your grandmother wrote this. My dear friends, you are all aware that today you are free women no longer slaves because only slaves cannot vote. Therefore I, do not, therefore, I do hope that every woman who has reached the age of 21 will register and remember that no one can tell you whom to vote for. Wherever you are, let us say thank God for this day because it was 12 years ago that we started struggling for this day, the day women are allowed to vote. It was in 1951 that Mrs. Mabel Walker and yours truly, Mary Ingram, sat down after attending a meeting of the House of Assembly and decided that women should be allowed to vote as well as men. She concludes, therefore any women hearing my voice, wherever you are in these Baham Islands, listen to the voice of the women who said, let us choose whom we want to represent us. Go and register yourself and when election day comes, vote for whom you want to represent you. I know most of you belong to some secret order and know how to vote, so do likewise. Remember ladies, we've got this vote by fighting together as a band of women. And as God showed that all women was his first ambassadors, when he said, go tell my disciples that I have risen. So let us go and do our job. Thank you. Sign, Mary Ingram, treasure of the women's suffragist movement. Minister, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, it's very powerful and very articulate. Very, yes, yes, it's extremely yeah. articulate. Yeah. And I, 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 will, I will tell you, she was, uh, she was a very educated woman. Um, if you read her on the history, you'll find that she was what you call a, a proof reader. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or I think it may have been the, the, the was it the, the Tribune, wow. I think? Okay. One of the, one of the, one of the major Times dailies. Or, okay. She was a proof reader. I suspect she so may have to a, written To be a proof reader, you had to be pretty um, well uh, articulate. Yes. And, and, yeah. you know, and I, I suspect she may have most of her husband's speeches and Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that letter, first of all, raises um, th that th that strong idea that she obviously mm -hmm. was extremely articulate, yeah. and she and a proof of it was that she was this proof reader yeah. for the one of dailies. One of the other things that that, re that that letter brings to mind for me is that um, even though she had a political opinion and a political bent, because mm -hmm. her husband, she would have been. Um, whatever her husband was in terms of his politics. Yeah. If you read that letter, you will see that she said, she, she talks about every woman going out to vote with voting their conscience. Absolutely. Voting in for who she they wanted to. Their job. She didn't try and influence yeah. anybody. Right. She, she, she said, go out and vote. I c encourage you to go out and vote. Exercise your God-given right, but do it based on your own conscience. Mm -hmm. and, and So I admire that. Speaking of the, the influence, I really wanted to ask you this question because I've heard this a lot. And I just wanted, what, what are your thoughts on this? I've heard comments saying that um, the, pri the, the movement was primarily 
um, for the rights for women to vote. Right. right. Um, then I hear the back end that it was actually a movement for, we'd like to say, a group of um, black politicians to then be in government. People, pe I've heard that a, a few times. What, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Because if we, if we come back, Janet Boswick, I think, came in in 1982. Right. So a woman really didn't get into Parliament until the later. First, the first elected woman she was. Elected, yes. right. So she yes. didn't get into Parliament until. Until uh, 20 years later, Ex basically. Exactly. Right. So yeah. what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my you thoughts think? are basically that um, whenever you are, I think whenever you are trying to um, accomplish what we call a sea change, where something um, is, is, is different from the norm, is different from the accepted view, sometimes it takes time. You know, it, for, for for that metamorphosis to take place, for, it, for that for mm -hmm. that thing to evolve, so to speak. Okay. And you have, to, I think, we have to take it in the context of the the days and the times we were living in. Okay. Think about what was going on in, in even in the United States of America. Right. Um, the the segregation and all those things. Civil rights. We were living okay. in the same era it's in the Bahamas. 60s, okay. Sixties, fifties. So 50s. It, the, these things were not going to necessarily happen overnight. But mm -hmm. what it required, it was re required, was commitment. Mm -hmm. dedication to the cause and people were prepared to fight and so even though we have uh, we can we can look at at, at the, the various movements historically we can talk about the women's suffrage movement right and then we can also talk about the movement where we were all fighting for what we call majority rule they right. were more or less taking place almost simultaneously together mm -hmm. one was building on the other if you see what I was so saying you're saying because with the, the right for women to vote, which was obtained in 1960, right, it allowed the it allowed women to vote in 1962, mm -hmm. and so what you you then had you had then uh, what 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 we what we then would call majority rule because the majority of people could now vote. Women were no longer excluded from the vote, and you also had prior to women be obtaining the right to vote and prior to majority rule, you had in place the the uh, the system where only landed persons right. could really vote, people who own land, mm. okay? And then you also had the system where, depending on how much land you owned and on how many islands you owned land, that determined the um, as how many mm. votes you had, ah. you see? And so the, the majority of people were excluded from, from voting right. up until 1962. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um